This is from the Associated Press. Let's take a look at what they have to say. They say the war in Ukraine adds to food price hikes and hunger in Africa. So this is from Mogadish in, in Somalia. They say uh, it now costs twice as much as it did just a few months ago to buy the wheat flour that uh, uh, this mother, Ayan, used to make breakfast each day for her 11 children in Somalia's capital. Nearly all the wheat sold in Somalia comes from Ukraine and Russia, which have halted exports through the Black Sea since Moscow waged war uh, on Ukraine. The timing could not be worse. The UN has warned that an estimated 13 million people were, f were facing severe hunger in the Horn of Africa region as a result of a persistent drought. So she's, this mother's been able to make do by substituting sorghum and other more readily available grain in her flatbread. Inflation, though, means the price of cooking oil that she still needs to prepare it has skyrocketed too. A jar that once cost $16 is now selling for $45 in the markets of Mogadishu. This businessman who imports wheat flour into Somalia says that things are going to worsen. He says there's a looming shortage of shipping containers to bring food supplies in from elsewhere at the moment. Some, quote, Somalis have no place to grow wheat, and we are not even familiar with how to grow it. Um, our main concern is what will the future hold for us when we currently run out of supplies. Another 18 million people are facing hunger in, uh, hunger in the Sahil, the part of Africa just below the Sahara Desert where farmers are enduring their worst agricultural production in more than a decade. The UN World Food Program says food shortages could worsen uh, when the lean season starts in late summer. African countries imported 44% of their wheat from Russia and Ukraine between 2018 and 2020. The African Development Bank is already reporting a 45% increase in wheat prices on the continent, making everything from couscous in Mauritania to the fried donuts sold in Congo more expensive for customers. Quote, Africa has no control over production or logistics chains and is totally at the mercy of the situation, the African Union chairperson said. He said he will travel to Russia and Ukraine to discuss the price woes. Vladimir Putin pressed the West last week to lift sanctions against Moscow over the war in Ukraine, seeking to shift the blame from Russia to the West for a growing world food crisis that has been worsened by Ukraine's inability to ship millions of tons of grain and other agricultural products while under attack. The Italian prime minister says that Moscow is ready to make a significant contribution. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, Putin told Italy that Moscow is ready to make a significant contribution to overcoming the food crisis through the export of grain and fertilizer on the condition that politically motivated restrictions imposed by the West are lifted. Remember, Russia uh, is the world's top producer of fertilizer, if I'm not mistaken, right? So that's also another very important, it's not just oil and gas. Blinken dismissed Russia's claims, noting that food, fertilizer, and seeds are exempt from the sanctions imposed by the US and many others on Russia. <laughs> All right, let me tell you how this works, man. This is a lie. This is a flat out lie. Let me tell you how this works. When the United States puts sanctions on a country, and I know this because I, I reported a lot on the uh, Syrian sanctions, the, I mean the US sanctions on Syria, uh, on Iran, on Yemen, on Venezuela, look, look what they do. In, in the, the, the statement itself, they will say that there's an exemption for humanitarian uh, purposes and you know, uh, food and NGOs and so on. It, it, but this is this is ridiculous. You know why? Because the sanctions, just by imposing sanctions on this country, you make it a pariah. No one wants to have anything to do with it. So in Yemen, let's take Yemen as an example. When uh, Trump and Pompeo put the Houthis on the um, uh, terror list, in Yemen, all the food is imported, and it's it's imported through traders. So that means it's bought commercially. It's not the UN bringing it. It's not the you know. Um, uh, whatever other NGO you want to name, it's not, uh, I don't know, it, it doesn't matter, it's bought, okay? In, in Yemen, the food is imported and bought commercially. So when you put sanctions on Yemen, those companies don't want to deal with you, even though you made an exemption. Because, number one, they're not humanitarian organizations, and number two, even the humanitarian organizations that do have an exemption can't convince traders banks and other things to actually work with them because the 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 formulas uh sorry the forms 
the um, all of the legal work that has to be done to get the exemption is so complicated. No one wants to deal with it. It's just not worth the risk because if you if you get uh, uh, slapped, you know, with a fine or even prison time by the Americans, it's not worth it to you, right? So that's how it works. They isolate a country and say, yeah, but look, we made an exemption for the NGOs. <laughs> yeah, it's meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. And man, I'm telling you, this is not just me saying that. I, I interviewed the, uh, uh, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Sanctions about uh, Venezuela and Syria because she went to both countries. And the shit that she told me, man, is, it's really, really awful. Uh, and we talked about it, precisely about this point. We addressed this point about the exemptions. They're not real. It's it's a fantasy. It, it's like if I can just give you another example. Um, well, I, no, it, it speaks for itself. It really speaks for itself. I think that's that's uh, here in the article. They continue to say that Ukraine has accused Russia of looting both grain and farm equipment from territories held by its forces. A Russia installed official in southern Ukraine has, has confirmed that grain from last year's harvest there is being sent to buyers in Russia, according to a report Monday by Russia's TASS state news agency. That grain, however, isn't making its way to Africa. Um, in Cameroon, a baker uh, says he's seen his daily clientele drop from 300 customers a day to only 100 since bread prices jumped 40% because of the lack of wheat imports. So he's let three of his seven employees go already and worries that he will have to shutter his Yaoundo business entirely unless something changes. So he says the price of a 50 kilogram bag of wheat now sells at $60 up from about $30 and the supply is not regular. So basically the price is doubled and it's not even guaranteed. The African Development Bank is warning of a potential 20% decline in food production and saying that farmers are having to pay 300% more for their imported fertilizer. Honestly, this is heartbreaking, man. You know, this is... I, 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 don't, I don't have reason to doubt the figures about how much the food uh, is becoming more expensive and so on. The, the, what needs more look... You know, what needs to be looked into more is what Ukraine and Russia are saying about each other. Right? Oh, you stole the farming equipment. Oh, you stole the grain. Uh, I, I don't know what to, what to believe about that. I haven't looked into this uh, uh, specifically about stealing farm equipment. But I have no doubt that the food prices are going up. I mean, you, you, you see yourself in your own stores um, outside Russia, you know, in the West, that everything is getting more expensive. So, you know, I have no reason to doubt this. I can tell you another thing. I know that in Yemen, uh, about 40%, so almost half, you know, close to a half of the uh, close to half of the wheats that they import, it comes from Russia and Ukraine. This is my uh, investigative piece on the fuel blockade against Yemen, and I did this with um, a Yemeni economist. He's he's an Oxford graduate. He worked at the World Bank for ten years. So I mean, you know, this stuff he knows it backwards, and we 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 put all of this together using only figures from the UN, from the International Monetary Fund. Uh, and the World Bank, and we did this on purpose because then nobody could say, "Oh, you you used figures from you know the the this government and that government." No, 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 no. This is all uh, these are all official figures, so no one can say anything. You can you know go calculate them. You'll find the same results. Um, and you know this is why people in Yemen are paying nine dollars a gallon. It's it's obscene. What we just re read about the food in Africa, about how the supply is not regular. I mean, the same thing is happening. Uh, in Yemen, look at this. Every year, you have less and less fuel ships that are coming through Hodeida because of this blockade. And again, this is like completely man-made. You know, the, the Saudis are only doing this to mess with Yemen. There's no reason to do this. Um, and my point is that when you don't have fuel, everything becomes more expensive, right? So uh, the agriculture declines, the industry declines, the service sector declines. And it really, really damages the economy very, very, very badly. And on top of that, on top of everything that's happening here, the war in Ukraine, like we said, 40% of Yemen's wheat comes from Ukraine and Russia. So, you, you know, Yemen, which is already one of the poorest countries on earth and is already suffering um, under seven years of war and suffering under a fuel blockade, is now has to suffer consequences of the war in Ukraine. It's too much, man. I don't know how anyone can bear this. It's too much. The people uh, in Yemen, like I said, they're some of the poorest on earth. Look at what happened last year, man. 80% of Yemenis, they paid 
644 million extra for gasoline and diesel products, right? Because when you you stop the ships from coming in, the ships have to go to another port, and then the the the, the route becomes longer. Um, the trucks have to travel further distance. They have to pay militias. They have to pay Al Qaeda that are setting up roadblocks, and then. Who has to pay the, the, the final cost? Like, it's passed on down to the consumers. It's really awful seeing poor countries uh, having to, you know, uh, uh, suffer even more because of the wheat shortages or, uh, shall we say, the disruption of wheat li deliveries. It's really awful.